Hello everyone, here at OS Reviews, you're watching our throwback review of the HTC First here in 2018. This is an Android phone that's a mid-tier device that came out originally in 2013, makes, making it about five years old. And the reason why it's interesting is because of Facebook Home. Uh, this is a proprietary skin or launcher on top of Android 4.1 Jelly Bean on this device that it came bundled with, and it was kind of an official Facebook phone. But it's also a commercial failure though not as drastic in scale as the Ken 1 and Ken 2 phones from Microsoft, it was also not followed up with a uh, successor, and since then, Facebook has scrapped the idea of building an Android-based launcher, which made it easier for you to like messages and share messages right from the home screen without even having to unlock it and getting deeper. But there are still concepts from the Facebook f Home and the HTC First that we see recycled today. For instance, it introduced chat heads for Messenger, which uh, displayed everyone's faces as these round bubbles that you could drag around on even a home screen and then of course tap to take a look at updates or share messages by dragging which we see today in the messenger app for iOS and the Play Store. So some of these things have been integrated into Facebook and Messenger services, but they no longer have produced uh, newer hardware-based products that are available right out of the box, of course. So taking a look back at the hardware of the HTC First, uh, we can see that it's actually a pretty attractive phone despite not coming with super premium builds such as metal, but it does have a soft touch rubber material and this was a mid-tier device that came in three different colors. Corners are completely rounded off that reminds me of a Palm device or an HP uh, kind of pre uh, as it was later called and it's very cute as well as comfortable when it comes to the holding experience and that's thanked by the display size as well which is measuring in at 4.3 inches. It's a super LCD panel so it offers very wide and generous viewing angles. The phone also came powered with the Snapdragon 400 processor not to be co confused with the newer versions of 400 series which are quad core chipsets uh, but this version is only a dual core one coming at 1.6 gigahertz coupled with one gig of RAM and a 2000 milliamp hour capacity battery behind the back cover. So in 2018, these are decidedly low-end entry-level specs, but they still work all right on this phone, as you'll see in a moment. Otherwise, on the side, there's a micro USB port for charging. There's a SIM card tray on the very top. There's a dedicated power switch, very tactile and responsive. There's a standard headphone port, of course. Other side features a dedicated volume rocker. And on the rear, there's a five megapixel camera with an LED flash. The bottom here features also the HTC logo, the Facebook logo, and it came on contract with AT&T here in the States. Uh, the phone retailed only for about $100 back then, so it was a pretty affordable option. All right, so if we put this next to some other phones, for instance, the iPhone 4S, we can see that it's, uh, it's of course, a much larger display coming in at 4.3 inches versus something like only 3.5 inches, which looks absolutely tiny in 2018 standards, but footprint is actually about the same. Nowhere near as large as a you know, 18 by 9 6 inch phone, it looks almost comical next to it in size, but very comfortable for holding one handed and putting into pockets. Alright, so diving deeper into the software, what's very interesting about the Facebook Home or the Home UI is that you can swipe up from the main page here to get into your list of applications, which is actually a gesture that reminds me a little bit of Google's uh, Pixel phones today. So the ability for you to basically just swipe up to have access to your list of apps is that same kind of motion that you would use on today's phones, and it's also the motion that you kind of use on Palm's WebOS. We can see here there's access to a Google search bar, there's a microphone for voice searching, and you have uh, a pretty stock experience with a few AT&T preloaded apps on here, but otherwise it's pretty clean in terms of what Facebook is doing. And in terms of their uh, organization, we just have this list for all your apps as the main page, and swipe over one panel, I have access to some bookmark apps, which I may use more commonly. So things like, of course, Messenger, Facebook, the Play Store, and the camera. And then swiping again to take a look at a second page of uh, applications that I would probably want to use more commonly. And if I go back home, this is the you know, main screen that you'll see upon turning the phone's display on, and this is where all of your st status updates will roll along if you're connected to a Facebook account, which we aren't with this uh, demo device at the moment. But you'll be able to see updates as they pop along, and you'll be able to see chat heads floating around on the display as people um, are talking to you on Messenger. So below here, I can also swipe left or right. If I don't want to go into my app tray, I can swipe left to go into Messenger directly, or I can swipe right to access the launcher. And if I go into launcher, another very interesting thing happens. The HTC First gives you 
pretty much a pure vanilla build of Android 4.1 Jelly Bean without any customization at all. In fact, if you dig deeper into settings, you have the ability to turn off the Facebook home altogether, leaving you, leaving you with basically a rare vanilla Android experience. Of course, Android 4.1 Jelly Bean is quite outdated today, but many of the interactive elements, including the drag down notification shade, as well as the swipes and navigation, still feel quite snappy, responsive, and at least in some way familiar and easy to understand. So if we tap on About Phone, we can indeed see it's running on Android 4.1.2 Jelly Bean. Alright, so revisiting some of the details of this phone next, let's take a quick look at how the camera performs. Um, unfortunately, the camera was one of the weaker elements of the HTC First. It's uh, a little bit on the softer side in terms of details. Images are perfectly acceptable and colors do look fairly natural and they're easy to share to Facebook, social media, things like that, but they're not up to the same tier as something like a, let's say, a latest iPhone or a latest Samsung phone. Uh, but then again, this is really a mid-end phone back when it was first introduced, so it didn't also try to compete with that territory. So the camera was functional, but uh, leaves some room for improvement. So for instance, this was a shot captured on a sunny day. You can tell how it's overexposed the sky completely. I can't see the sun. I can't see any of this, the clouds. This should be completely blue, but it looks one color, which is white. So there's a bit of a tendency there. And again, some of the details, as you, if you zoom in, are lost because only 5 megapixels compared to 13 or uh, even higher in 2018. But for the most part, if you have a bit of patience, you can still get some pretty decent looking images in terms of color and saturation and vibrancy, but don't expect, again, the best camera experience in the world. You are able, however, to capture HD quality video. So if we go back here, the camera interface, as you can see, is also pretty much stock Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. You can zoom in and out digitally. I can also turn on flash settings. I can change some very quick recording settings, panoramic settings, but that's basically it. I want to mention that the main home key here is also a multitasking uh, key. So I can double tap on it to bring up the multitasking tray, and there's only one gig of RAM here. So if you have a lot of tabs open in the background, it's definitely going to struggle more, but uh, you can see how, how it's struggling a few apps here and seems to be doing an okay job so far. Um, otherwise, I can also long hold if I wanted to access, say, Google Now, so you can access a quick voice assistant, just like on newer phones, but it's a bit more sluggish. It's definitely taking a little bit longer than on a new, newer device, and you'll see some choppiness here and there as you scroll, but it's nice to know that that, of course, there have been many software updates which you can still get from the Play Store to update the Google apps and the Google experiences, uh, which can still get you up and running and give you a pretty uh, you know, fresh feeling software experience. The only downside, of course, is security patches might be out of date. So as we try loading up the full version of the New York Times using Wi-Fi right now, um, I want to emphasize that, again, the Snapdragon 400 on here was the first generation of the 400 series. And back then, it was still a dual-core chipset, so it's uh, not quite as optimized and you know, as ahead of its time as the second generation 400 and the 410, which were uh, for mid-end chips or budget-oriented chips, really, uh, in back in 2014-2015, were well ahead of its time. I picked up a Snapdragon 400 phone with a quad-core chipset just a few days ago, and it still felt actually quite snappy. And here's a quick demo of the audio quality using the built-in speakers. So the video playback experience is actually pretty good. I would say that scrubbing and the load up times are still quite respectable even after updating the YouTube app. You'll see some sluggishness, however, in terms of transitioning if you're always swiping back and forth between some of these gestures. It uh, takes a little bit longer and you'll notice some sluggishness and choppiness between the animations, but the videos themselves load up pretty quickly and you can still watch them in HD resolution, which is good. The speaker quality gets louder than expected, but it's not you know very powerful. Of course, there isn't that much bass. Um, it's also not a stereo speaker, but for, again, an entry-level slash mid-end phone, it suffices. 
So that's more or less it as far as our revisited or throwback look at the HTC Home here in 2018. This is a device I would recommend picking up. I would say probably not unless you're trying to maybe collect a rather unique and uh, special phone that um, hasn't fared too well commercially, but definitely is memorable for uh, being kind of an official Facebook phone, which again, we no longer see today. And taking a look back at this, I would say that, H that HTC and Facebook in particular have probably learned their lesson when it comes to building a hardware product, which doesn't make too much sense when they're planning to re release the software to everyone uh, on iOS and Play Store anyways. Uh, so in that sense, they kind of shot themselves in the foot a bit by releasing the HTC first, which didn't really give you a huge advantage over other devices. So you can check out more details again in the links below, but for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews, but this has been our video of the HTC first revisited in 2018.